all optional. You do not have to get these. We just highly recommend it uh, as, a, as a good way to take care of our instruments. I want to make one quick note. They're all the same price, taxes included and everything, $15, except for the ones with the little star next to it or the asterisk next to it. Those are 20, just note, note that. When you fill these out, if you decide to get one, please fill it out completely. Name, school, and check mark what you want. If you put your name in school, put money in it, and don't check mark anything, I have no idea what you want. So um, just please fill this out completely. Check cash, put an envelope, bring it to Ms. Gatsby. I'll be around in two weeks uh, to pick them up. If your parents decide they want to pay with a debit card or credit card, that's fine. They just have to call the store. I'll fill out one of these over the phone with them. They just have to call that number at the top, all right? Cool, so we're gonna jump right into it. I have a lot to go over, and we don't have a ton of time, but we actually burned through pretty good in the last class, so hopefully I can do that again. Um, these are the kits, super slick is the brand. They all look the same, except for the trombones. Trombones, raise your hand. Cool, that's gonna look like that, all right? So, um, and the only reason for that is we just we like their product a little bit better for the trombones, all right? So, flute players, raise your hand so I know where you're at, so I know where I'm looking. Okay, cool, great. Um, one thing for the flutes, and I really, I don't care if you get a care kit from me or not, um, you definitely need one of these if you don't already have one. Um, sometimes they're metal, sometimes they're plastic, sometimes they're wood, like you have a Dijau or Armstrong, Armstrong, so uh, I think they're plastic. Um, so whatever, you just need one of these, this is a flute cleaning rod, this is on your list, okay? Whether or not you get a kit or anything, you definitely need one if you don't already have one, all right? What this is for is in your kit, uh, so clarinet, saxophones, I want you to pay attention because there's a lot of similar items in the flute kit that you're gonna see, and I'm not gonna go back over those. I'm just gonna kind of hold them and say, yep, those look familiar. So this is a swab. This is for cleaning the inside of the instrument, all right? It's like a teardrop shape. The teardrop part, the little pointy end, goes in about a quarter of the way, like a little flag. Flip it over the metal, metal rod here so there's not any metal showing and that's what we're gonna to use to clean our instrument. I'm assuming everybody knows how to put their instruments together at this point, so I'm not going over that. So you're done playing, you're gonna take it apart. If my instrument's not in my hands, where does it go? Case. In your case, very good. Um, and one quick note I wanna, I wanna mention that everybody can do to help take care of their instruments is um, wash your hands before you play, and especially if you're coming back from lunch, rinse your mouth out. Think about it. Anything that's in your mouth and you blow into the instrument, it goes in the horn. That's the whole purpose of all this. We want to keep the inside clean so when you take a breath in your music, you're not taking the instrument completely away from your body. You're going with the mouthpiece still in, right? I've seen mouthpieces turn green because they don't take care of them, right? Again, whatever is go out of your mouth goes in the horn, and then you breathe that back in. We don't want that. The other part of this is we want to keep them in good working order. Like I was telling the last class, music is one of the last things that's really a hands-on activity. It means you need to have the instrument in your hands, learning with Ms. Gasquee and your fellow students on how to play music together and also individually. We want to keep that instrument in your hands as long as possible so it's not always in the repair shop. That makes Mr. Lenny, my business partner, grumpy, and you guys are missing class time, all right? So um, these are all things that we can do to help maintain our instrument as well as keep them clean. So flutes, flute cleaning rod, you have your swab ready, you put it in your case, taking it apart. You're gonna take one piece at a time, Go through one side, pull it out, make sure there's no metal showing, push it through the other side, pull it out. That's the body. Do the same for the head joint and the foot joint, right? <laughs> Pretty simple. All right, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get moisture out of the instrument. Why? Because moisture that stays in the instrument not only does it get moldy and gross, see those things right there, these white things right here? These are called pads. On a flute, saxophone, clarinet, you all have pads in some capacity. If you leave moisture in your instrument, this will ex expediate or speed up the process in which these break down. When they break down, they're no longer creating a good seal. At that point, you have to get them all replaced. The cost on a clarinet and a flute repad right now is $250. Wow. The, the price of pads doubled last year. Oh, saxophones, where's my saxophones? Raise your hand. Thousand dollars. So, so the deal is, if you take good care of your instrument and keep moisture out of it, you don't have to worry about that for about 10 years, all right, the earliest 10 years. That means you can play all the way through middle school, 
all the way through high school and even a little bit into college if you decide to go that route and not have to worry about that. So you don't want to go home and tell your parents that, hey, I didn't take care of my instrument, I left moisture in it, now my pads don't seal, and now I have to have a repad, right? That's bad, it's a bad day. Which, uh -huh. Real quick. My saxophone was $200. That's just, that, I don't know what to tell you. I don't make no sense, Coach. Uh, well. Different, so, so basically the bottom line is, it's like taking your car to the mechanic, right? You keep the oil changed, you keep it in good working order, your repairs have never passed an oil change in an air filter, come 50 bucks, right? If you don't put any oil in it, you run it hot, the coolant goes down, and it blows up the engine, it costs more than the car did. That's just how it goes. You can buy a new car. Well, you can buy a new sack when you got that kind of money. Go ahead. We'll, we'll go after that after class, we can talk about that. So anyway, the point that I'm just trying to make is these are not toys, right? If you have the money to replace it, great, good for you. I don't, you know? So we just want to keep them in your hands as long as possible. And the point that I'm trying to make to you is these are not toys, these are real things. They, can, they, they do cost money to get fixed, right? So we want to keep that as long as possible from happening. All right, so flutes. What else comes in your kit? So that's the inside. Everybody also gets an outside cloth, all right? This is for cleaning the outside. So you swab the inside on the outside, go through, wipe it down. You don't have to be real hard with it. You don't want to bend your keys. Put it back in the case. Now, here's the note on this. What does that say? Four silver instruments only. So here's the deal. We don't share our cloth with any other instruments, okay? They are designed specifically for the flute, for lacquered instruments, that'd be trumpet, trombone, alto saxophone, euphonium, all that is a lacquered instrument. What do I mean by lacquer? It's just the coating on the uh, on the metal. I'll show you in a second. It's that yellow, kind of yellow color. That's not brass, it's actually a lacquer on the brass. So for flute, you give a silver. Why? There's a little bit of a compound in the cloth that's for silver instruments. Same thing on the lacquer. Clarinet, yours doesn't have any compound in it because you don't really have any of that. So um, we don't want to share our cloth. That's the bigger point. All right, cool. Flutes. What else also comes in your kit that's unique to flutes is you get this little thumb rest. All right, this is for your right thumb as you're holding it. It sticks on the body about there. And what that does is keeps your thumb in the good playing position. It also gives a little bit of support. Makes it a little more comfortable. Cool? If you don't use that, you can kind of see it starts to wear off on the tarnish. It'll, it'll tarnish this and it'll start to wear down the, the plating a little bit. So that's that's in there as well for you. All right, and then finally, clarinet saxophones. Pay attention to this part because you have one that looks identical. This is a cleaning brush. This is So everything I just went over, That's you're gonna do every single time you play flutes. You're gonna swallow out the inside, wipe down the outside, put it in its case, done to go. This is the cleaning brush. For flutes, because you're all closed hole flutes, you're just gonna worry about the bristle part, all right? This is like a once a month thing. Just go through, brush out all the dead skin, dirt, and grime from around your keys that are harder to get where your cloth can't get to. And yes, that is dead skin. That is that is what it is. Your hands, they, they we shed skin all the time. Just is what it is, okay? So we just wanna get that out. Again, wash your hands before you play. It'll, you'll prolong that a good bit. Cool. And then um, clarinet, saxophone. This part, you'll pay more attention to because on clarinet specifically, you can see it pretty easily. You have open holes because your fingers seal the hole, right? You'll clean out that part. Saxophones, same deal. Some of your keys have pads, some of the keys are open hole. That's what you'll clean out. Obviously, when you do this, stuff goes in the horn. Swab out the instrument when you're done, right? Makes sense? So flutes, clarinets, saxophones, you all have this little brush, all right? Cool. All right, and that pretty much covers the flutes. Flutes, specifically flutes. Any quick questions? So, like, my mom, she makes me clean out, like, the inside of mm -hmm. it with, like, a glasses thing because she says it's, like, normal to any cloth. Like, is that okay? Um, you mean, like, to clean your glasses, like, your eyeglasses? Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just don't want to, don't use, like, any silver compact. Like, don't put any, like, silver polish or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Avoid any kind of chemicals like that. You don't need a lot, and the chemical that's in this is specific. So if you're not going, let's, so good point. If you're not going to use the cloth that comes in it or not get a kit, what do I use instead? You can also take a 100% cotton t-shirt, 
cut it up into some strips, use that on your cleaning rod as well. That will work fine as well. It's an old 100% cotton t-shirt, not a polyester or anything like that. Make sure the tag says 100% cotton, all right? The only thing you gotta be careful a little bit with that is there's a lot more like lint on that, so sometimes that can get up in the instrument and cause some problems, but for the most part, that's okay. Um, good question though. All right, clarinets. All right, here we go. So, do, do, do. in your kit, you get some similar items and you get some that are unique to you. Okay, outside cloth we talked about. This is your swab, we're gonna go over in a second. All right, so you can see it. You guys got a brush just like the flutes and the saxophones. Okay, what is this bit right here? Cork grease. grease. All right, so here's my deal. Cork grease, valve oil, slide lube, all that stuff. Okay, it basically, here's my motto. Say it with me, here's my motto. A little goes a long way. Say it back. A little goes a long way. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So, Claire, uh, flutes, last thing. You guys don't use any grease or anything on your flutes, all right? If your head joint or foot joint don't go together very well, let Ms. Gaspi know there's probably another issue. Uh, what you can do is take your exterior cloth and wipe down where the joints meet. So what do I mean by that? So on the body, you have a, a joint where the head joint goes in, take your finger, just run it on the inside, do that, and then on the foot joint area, wipe the outside. Same thing on the head joint and foot joint respectively, try to put them together. If it goes on easily, great, you're, you're fine. That should fix it most of the time. If it doesn't, you still have a hard time getting it together, there's another problem, let her know and I'll come pick it up, okay? All right, clarinets. For cork grease, for you guys, you have two choices. You can use the applicator and put it on. I don't like that because you generally put on too much, all right? What happens if you put too much cork grease on this cork right here, it actually will eat into the cork, break down the glue, and pop this all off. So that's bad, we don't want that. So when I say a little goes a long way, I literally mean the best application is Take your finger, rub it on the applicator, put it on the cork. Now, I've already done this a couple times, so I'm using very, very, very little just for demonstration purposes, but that's really it. You still want some kind of resistance when you're putting your instrument together. If you put it on so much that it just kind of like whoop, slides on, there's pressure when you play. You could potentially have the whole bottom half or the bell come off and hit the ground and break, right? So that's an extreme case, but what really normally happens is you put too much cork grease, the cork itself will break off, all right? So now that you've got everything, hold your question towards the end of the clarinets. So now that you have, you have everything together, you're getting ready to put it back in its case, you take your mouthpiece off, you're gonna get your swab. So whenever we're doing a swab, saxophones, clarinets, we always go with the flow of the air. That means I'm gonna go top down on a clarinet. Same thing on the saxophones, I'm gonna go top down. I'll show you how to do that. Why? Clarinets, look inside, you see a little post sticking out there? Uh-huh. See the little post? You see a little post, post hanging inside the barrel there? Yeah. Yep. So if you go from the bottom and this gets stuck up there, you can't pull it out the other direction because all the cloth is inside the body. If you go from the top and it gets stuck on that, you can always pull it back out the other way. Now, if that happens and you can't get it out, don't freak out. Take it to Ms. Gaspi, let her know. If she can't get it, I'll get it, okay? So, here's how you do this. Quick, easy method. I like to take the string and the cloth where they meet, put them in the palm of my hand, and just like some fishing line, kind of feed it into my hand, all right? Now, on the other end is a little weighted part, all right? That takes it through the horn, a little weighted part. We go to the top, down, drop it through, comes out the bottom, pull it through, it's like a magic trick. There you go. So do that two or three times and you're done. So that's the inside. You're gonna do that every time you get done playing. All right? And then you just wind it up, put it in your case. The other question I get on the swabs is can I wash them? The answer is yes, you can. Here's the thing. You obviously, saxophones and clarinet have a big long string. If you put that right in the wash, it's gonna get bound up in the washing machine, that's bad. So, put it in a sock or a, old, a pillowcase, and that will, that will make sure the string doesn't get um, bound up in the washing machine, okay? So, there's that. So, on the outside, you're done playing, you got the outside, this is your outside cloth. Here, unlike the flutes where you take everything apart first, you're gonna take it apart kinda as you wipe off the outside. There's the barrel, the upper body, and again, you don't have to be real hard with it, you're just trying to get the fingerprints and bits off your your keys. Finally, the lower part of the body. 
Once you get good at this, it'll take you all 30 seconds to do. And then finally the bell. And you're done with the inside and outside care of your instrument. All right, so last couple of things in the case. Brass players, pay attention. The next part, you're gonna have one of these two. It's just gonna look a little different, but you're gonna have one too. All right, this is a mouthpiece brush, okay? Obviously, you guys don't have a mouthpiece, you have a head joint. So, everyone with a mouthpiece, same deal across the board. This is your mouthpiece. If I recommend doing this once a week. If you don't clean your mouthpiece once a week, if you just let it go and say, eh, not gonna worry about it, like I said, trumpet mouthpieces I've seen come in where you can't even see through it because it's so got stuff in there. Uh, clarinet ones, I generally see they're green. That's always a good one. So what you're going to do, just take some warm water in a little cup or a bowl or something where you can submerge it. Um, a little cup of warm water, not hot, not super cold, just nice tepid water. Um, a little bit of dish soap, submerge it, clean it really good. Take your brush, clean out the inside, clean out the part here. Rinse it, again, with kind of tepid temperature water. Rinse it really good. Set it on a paper towel, let it dry. Do not take it and put it right in the cap and then put it in your case. It'll get moldy. You're still keeping moisture in, right? So make sure you set it on the counter or wherever. Don't take a hair dryer to it. Just, just let, put it on a paper towel, let it air dry. It'll be ready by the next day. Put it back in your case, you're good to go. Again, you're only doing this once a week, all right? So that's brass mouthpieces. These plastic mouthpieces, hard rubber mouthpieces, same concept. Real quick, what you got? Won't the brush dry the water out though? No, because you're submerging it in the water and you're scrubbing it out. And then you use the brush to dry? Yeah, well, no, because there's no real drying part to that. It's just the bristles to help scrub out the, the hard parts, right? You good? Try it, experiment, and let me know how it works for you. All right. Sweet. All right. Um, real quick. Okay, do we have one of those? Because I didn't get one of those. So all this is, yeah, so you came in, so basically what I'm here today to show is the care kit. These are some care kits you can purchase if you want that it all comes in. Some of the items like the swab may already be in your instrument. This part probably is not, okay? So if you want one, that's what the little care kits at the top are. But we'll, we'll go over, go back. Would there be a place, like you don't have to name a specific place, but would I be able to go to some, to some place and just get that singular um you can find them online and whatnot if you just want that bit. Um, I don't yeah. stock just the individual pieces because by the time you add up all the individual pieces, it's cheaper just to get the kit. All right? Okay, let me finish clarinet real fast and then I'll, I'll jump to yours. Don't, don't, I haven't forgot you. I promise. I haven't forgot you. All right. Last couple things in the clarinet and saxophone, you're going to get some of this as well. All right, this is a reed holder. All right, the way this works is. When you buy a new pack of reeds, they come in the plastic holders. That's great. You're going to keep those in your case when you're not using them. This I like to use for the reeds that work the best. If you find a couple of reeds in a pack that work really, really well compared to the other ones, put those in this case to keep them nice and dry, right? When you're not using them, leave, leave the new ones in these plastic cases in your case to keep them nice and dry, but you know that they're your spares. These are the good ones, okay? So a saxophone, clarinet, same deal. You'll have that. If you need extra reads, they're on your sheet. Um, this is for the thumb rest. If you have a plastic thumb rest, you probably don't need this. It's in your kit, but I have not found where these really fit that great on the big plastic ones. So you have two options, clarinet. You have a little sticker version. So if you have a metal one like this, peel it, stick it to the bottom. That's it. Or you have this little foam bit that slides over. Depending on the clarinet, depending on the manufacturer, you can just figure out which one fits the best for you, okay? Again, if you have a plastic one, saxophones, clarinets, if you have a plastic thumb rest, don't worry about it. If you want to get real fancy and not have to worry about it ever again, because those do wear out, we do have the rubber versions like that. They're just like a hard rubber. Again, these only really fit on the metal thumb rest. They don't really fit on the plastic ones, so don't waste your money if you have a plastic one. Just get these for if you have a metal one, if you so desire. Um, pretty much as long as you don't lose them, they'll last. All right, final thing for the woodwinds, essentially. Uh, then we'll do a quick swab on the, on the saxophone. In a T-saver, on your sheet, you'll see it's on the top left, T-saver. One comes in your kit. So clarinets, you get a, a clear plastic one. Saxophones, you get a, a thicker black one right there. All right? So it's like a little sticker, it sticks on the top of your mouthpiece. What that does is keeps your teeth from digging into the mouthpiece. If you have a plastic one, to replace this is about $45. If you have a hard rubber mouthpiece for clarinet, it's upwards of $100 plus. 
If for some reason you have a hard rubber sax mouthpiece, I would be surprised, but if you do, that's like 270 to replace right now. These are three bucks for a pack of two. So whether it's plastic, hard rubber, doesn't matter. For $3, you can protect your mouthpiece for a very long time, probably never have to replace it unless you chip it or, or break it, okay? So one comes in the kit, I highly recommend an extra two pack. That's really all you need, stick them in your case, forget about it, and you're good for a while. All right, all right, my man, go. If you keep the moisture in the instrument, how long does it take to mold? Um, I haven't done the official science experiment, but I can tell you a mold. <laughs> Not a risk I'd want to take. Um, all right, so, real fast, any real quick questions on clarinets or flutes? Um, mine didn't come with one of those, but I can see in that one, uh, I have that one in my case. Oh, this, uh, this one? one? This one. Yeah, so this little, this, yeah. So, we got the same. Well, I'm going to go over saxophones here in a second. I'm going to talk about that specifically, so I'm going to hold that thought. All right, so let me jump into saxophones before we take any more questions. I just want to make sure I get to everybody before we... Keep going. All right. Saxophones. I hope you're paying attention because yours is pretty much identical, except for I want to show you how to properly swap out your saxophone using two hands and not drop it. Um, saxophones are the most expensive things to buy as well as repair. So, saxophone kit. Boop. Looks like this. Inside. Swab. Core grease like we talked about. What's my motto? Good, you're paying attention. Great. Mouthpiece brush, we already talked about. I'm just showing you that you guys have this stuff. Key brush, we already talked about that. Thumb rest, again, for metal ones. And a reed holder, all right? So it's all the same. Here's the bit that's a little different. So, in your kit, you will get two swabs. Here's the deal. I am talking to the manufacturer. I really don't like this version, this hard chamois version. This is for the neck, small ones for the neck. I've had these pop off in the neck, so I'm not a real big fan of these, okay? I'm asking them to see if they can replace it with a same material as this, silk. If they can't for some reason and you get one with this in it, don't panic, just toss it aside. You can use the body swab on the neck because this is thin enough that it will make it through the neck and not get stuck, okay? So I'm gonna try to get it where it's a smaller version of this. If I can, just use the body swab. So to your, your answer, if you do have one of these, um, if you just wanna get a swab, I would get one of the microfiber ones. If you just wanna get a swab, um, or if you wanna get a kit, the silk one that's in it. These are okay, they just have a tendency for the knots to break off because they're, they're real thick so they get stuck a lot easier, all right? Some saxophones, if you rented it from us, may have one that looks like this. I promise I'll answer your questions. Save your arms, your arms, rest them up. I promise I'll take questions. All right, if, it, if you, this came with yours, that's fine too. This is just a hanky material. This is just a little foam piece um, to help hit all the pads. Either one is fine, all right? Or the microfiber version, that's all fine. All right, so with the neck, same thing like the flutes. You're gonna put your instrument in the case, take it one piece at a time. Same deal, I'm just gonna show you that the body swab does go through the neck. Same deal as the clarinets, put it in your palm, feed in the string. Get to the weighted end, put it through the neck. Again, we're following the airflow. Boop, comes out the bottom, pull it through. So just to show you, the body swab does make it through the neck, all right? Now, with the saxophone itself, and again, I would make your life easy, before you pick up the body of the saxophone, get your swab ready. All right. Your hand fits very well on the bell. See how when I cut my hand, that bell, it sits real nice and tight. Put it against my body, it's not going anywhere, right? You're gonna be sitting when you do this, not standing like I'm doing right now, all right? Weighted in, goes in the top, drop it in. Oops, see, I didn't run it into my hand. Well, didn't do it well. Weighted end goes in, okay? You'll feel it hit the bottom. You need to feed a little bit of the cloth 
into the saxophone so the string has enough slack to get through the bell, all right? Once you have it, put your finger at the top here in the neck. I've got two hands on this now, right? This isn't going anywhere, all right? Now, you may have to wiggle a little bit, but you got two hands, so you're fine. Tilt it forward and wiggle it. Sometimes the string gets caught, like mine did. If you have to take it out and restart, that's okay. There it goes. Pops out the bottom. Pull it through. If you noticed, if you're, right, if you're left handed, you'd be doing it with your right hand. I'm right handed, so I'm doing my left hand. With my left hand on the bell like that, it's not going anywhere, okay? So that's the bigger point that I want to get across to you is, so you don't drop this, don't wave it in the air, try to stuff this all down. Do it in the method I just showed you, and you'll never drop this instrument, okay? One other thing to note, saxophones. Your saxophone should come with a little end cap like this. Please put the end cap back in, wipe it down, and then put it in your case. The reason for that is, even in the case, if you don't have this in there, and the case drops and hits on that side, I have had this octave key bend. This guy right here, in the case, because of the way it hits. They mold these things to be very tight to fit, so it's not bouncing around. So it takes a good enough shot, it's gonna bend that. With this in there, this gives some support to this bracing here, hopefully to prevent that from happening, okay? So please use your end cap. Also, if you have a big long stick with fuzzies on it, a big pad saver looking thing, that's what they call them, they're called pad savers. They do not save the pads. What was the first thing I said? We wanna get moisture out. out of the horn. If I put a big fuzzy stick in there, it's gonna keep moisture in the horn and it's gonna break down your pads even quicker. Don't buy them, they're not worth it. If you've got one, get a swab, you'll be good to go. All right, all right, saxophone, real fast. Uh, I play a tenor saxophone. Is it any different? Nope, exact same same deal. Yours is just bigger. All right, and there's a tenor sax kit on there if you want to get one. All right. Uh, also, I was going to ask the question. Oh yeah, is the end cap also in the kit? Because I don't have one. Uh, if you're playing a tenor, it's probably the schools. I might be able to find it. She may have one if she does. She can she can get with me. All right, how much time do I have? Um, some announcements may come on about like three twenty-five. Okay. But I, okay, so I want to get into trumpets and, and trombones and low brass, so I'm going to dive into that, hold questions to the end. If we have some time, we'll take some more questions. All right, trumpets, trombones, low brass. Pay attention because your kits are real similar to each other. All right, I'm going to start with trumpets. Let me organize my stuff. Well, just move some things. Okay, so trumpets. In your kit, exterior cloth, like I said, lacquered instruments only, don't share it. Mouthpiece brush, we talked about it. Valve oil, two to three drops max. If you need more than two to three drops, we're going to talk about how to fix that. You do not want to put more than two to three drops. If you have to do that, there's a different problem. Okay? Here's what we are going to talk about. The snake and the other brush. This is tuning slide grease, trombones, low brass trumpets. Pretty much for right now, you're not at that point yet, how to properly use this. So just hold on to it. Ms. Gatsby will go over that with you at the appropriate time, okay? So just know you've got it. When that comes time, if you get a kit, you know you have what you need, all right? Your kit will look a little different. It comes in like a little circular uh, container instead of a little tube like this. All right, um, so what we do want to talk about, trombones, low brass, um, uh, you have a snake like this. So trumpets, trombones, low brass, you have a snake here. Trumpets and low brass with pistons. If you have a piston, like a euphonium has pistons, a tuba sometimes has pistons, um, versus like a French horn has rotors. Some tubas have rotors. If you have a piston, there'll be a brush like this. The process is the same as trumpets to low brass, all right? Same with the snake. Um, trombones, obviously, you have slides. You don't have pistons. So I'm gonna talk about this first, and then we'll talk about snakes. All right, so trumpets. Do, do, do. One thing I do wanna note on the mouthpiece brush for you guys, for brass, this is called the cup. This circular concave part of the mouthpiece is called the cup. It tapers down. That means the brush will only go so far. So when you're washing it, it really fits on the back end, right? That's it. I know, it's all silly, but it is what it is. So, just note, don't try to jam that, and it's gonna get stuck, and then you don't have a mouthpiece. All right, so, that's the mouthpiece brush. Take note of that. Trumpets. So, pistons. 
This is your top cap. We're going to unscrew the top cap. I'm going to do one at a time. Why? Why am I going to do one at a time? You said so. You? Why would I only do one piston at a time? Nope. He's not I know trumpet. exactly why. He's not Who's a trumpet? trumpet. Uh, don't. It's pretty common sense. Go ahead. Exactly Help me, trumpets. Yeah. Why would I only do one at a time? Because. Don't overthink it. I don't want to mix them up. Right? No, you just don't want to mix them up. So, number one is for number one. Number two is number two. Number three is number three, right? When you're doing all your fingerings and whatnot. The reason for that, and this is a good question from the earlier class, you pull the piston out, you have these holes, right? Those holes line up with the tuning slides coming out of the casing. If I put number one into number two, it'll go in, it'll even see, it won't play. So we want to do it one at a time, that way we don't get them mixed up. They are numbered, but it's hard to read, save yourself a lot of headache, just do it one at a time. So raise your hand trumpet so I know where I'm looking. All right, cool. So, when you're doing this, hey, you guys made it, no, I'm a bass player and I know all this, it's all good. So, I'm going to put this on a clean, dry surface, and why I'm going to put it on a clean, dry surface is the tolerance or the space between the inside of the casing and the outside of the piston is thousands of an inch. That's less than a piece of paper. It's less than the thickness of a piece of paper. So, any kind of lint, dirt, grime can cause that to not move up and down. So when I was saying earlier, if you have to put more than two to three drops of valve oil on your piston and it's not going up and down, there's probably something stuck. So don't keep adding valve oil, it actually makes it worse. Pull the piston out, clean dry surface. You have Good your... afternoon, students and staff. I just would like to announce the winners too for our helping hand. We have honorable mention goes to Miss Livingston. This is for our canned food drive with 72 cans. Ms. Lily, 130, Mr. Woodson, 134, Ms. T, 155, and our winner is Ms. Lewis's class with 177 cans. Congratulations. Good. All right, guys, congratulations. Let's we are also up. going to congratulate our tacky turkey teacher winners for this year. We have Discovery, Mr. Maglione with 375 feathers, a guester, 8th grade, Mr. Harder with 40, and Ms. Livingston with 1,870, 7th grade, Mr. Mattias with 142, and Mrs. T with 241, 6th grade, Mr. Alex Del Castillo, 1,499, and Ms. Chestnut with 616. Our king and queen this year, congratulations to Mrs. DeVito with 2,313 feathers. And our king, Mr. S, with 2,590. Congratulations. We will now pick our winner for our OBM staff raffle. And thank you, staff, for purchasing a raffle. Me? No. Mr. S. Once you get the, the piston out, the next thing you're going to do is pull the bottom cap, so top cap, bottom cap. Unscrew the bottom cap. Here's the deal. If you go to take this apart and you're, the bottom cap or top cap don't unscrew, never, ever, ever, guys, I, I don't care what instrument it is, never, ever, ever take any pliers, hammers, anything. Do not try to fix it yourself. That's why we're here. Let Ms. Gatsby know. I'll come out and try to fix it. If I can't get it apart, We'll take it and deal with it at the shop, all right? Do not put pliers on these. If you put pliers on that and try to get it off, you're going to bend the casing. It's very thin metal, all right? You destroy the casing, throw away the horn. It'll be more expensive to fix it than the horn's worth, all right? So we'd never, ever take any tools to your instruments. All right, so if you can get the bottom top cap off, you have your brush right here. And this is a good thing to do when you're doing your mouthpiece. That's a good time to do this, all right? Goes on one side, scrub it. Go to the bottom side, scrub it, take your piston, 
Put them back to the top. Now listen, real quiet. Everyone real quiet so you can hear this. Hear it click one more time. Hear it click into place. That's how you know the orientation is right where the holes that I showed you are lining up in the casing, right? If you take this and put it in number one and spin it, it'll click into place, but it won't play because it's not the right holes, all right? So pro tip to put your caps back on. Don't turn them right to the right. They're very thin thread, so they cross thread really easily. Turn it to the left, kind of press down, kind of hear it click into place one more time. I hear it click into place, turn it to the right. It should move easy. If it moves easy, you know you're good. Check the piston. Yep, it, it feels good. You probably don't even need to add any more valve oil because you already tried oiling it to fix the problem and it didn't fix it. If it moves up and down, great. Put your bottom cap on, same deal. These are a little trickier. Put them on, turn it to the left. It'll settle into place. You hear it kind of click. Turn it to the right, you're done. Check it, make sure it works. That's it. Do that when you do your mouthpiece. I'll never see the instrument in the shop. You'll take really good care of it. All right? Um, low brass. Where's my low brass player? Where's, my, where's like my euphonium or two? Uh, euphonium? All right. So, my man, yours is the same deal. The only difference is because your instrument's so large, you really can't do that holding on to it. Put it in the case, and then one at a time, you can unscrew the caps and, and swab it out, okay? Um, and if you have trouble with that, Ms. Gatsby can help you too because you're using a school instrument, but just make sure you put it in the case first, then undo it, all right? And you can clean it and whatnot. Um, but you have the exact same deal. All right. All right, finally, trump, trumpet, trumbo, low brass. You all have a cleaning snake. It's the same deal for everybody. It's just a different size depending on what the instrument is. So this is for right now, you're just cleaning the lead pipe area. This is the receiver, this is the lead pipe. This is the part you're cleaning out. As you get more advanced and you learn how to take more of your instrument apart, you can use that on all the tuning slides too, all right? So when you do this, put it through the receiver. When it stops, and again, trombones, low brass, doesn't matter. When it stops, that's as far as you wanna go. If you keep trying to press, you could potentially push this lead pipe slide off and it hits the ground and we have a problem. When you do this and you're going to pull it out, everything inside is going to come out. So face it at the ground and then pull it out and that cleans out this. Again, you'll do this stuff when you do your mouthpiece. You're not going to do this every single time you play. Every single time you play, you're just going to wipe the outside down really good, put it in the case. All right? Any questions, trumpets? You have some extra. That, I mean, they get gross too. You, you're gonna want to replace them. They're not. They don't last forever. So I would say, depending on how much of it you already have, um, you you may only need some valve. You may only need the outside cloth. Um, I don't know if I have it broken down like that necessarily. But like I said, by the time you do all the individual pieces, it's cheaper to get the kit. To be honest with you, um, the kits aren't that expensive to begin with. So if you have some extra pieces, that's okay. You can lose them, and they do get kind of gross over time. So not a bad thing. But good question. Okay, trombones. Where's my trombone player? My man. All right. He's been sitting so patient. Very good. And low brass, just so you can kind of see what your kit looks like real fast. And tenor sax. Where's my tenor sax player? Just so you can see. Same deal. There's a silk version. And then there's that one I said don't, don't worry about. So it's the same thing. Don't use that for your neck. Use the body one, okay? If it comes with that, I'm going to try to get that swapped out. Low brass. See? Yours is the exact same. Your brush is nice. That's it. And your mouthpiece, tuning slide grease, snake, everything else is the same. Cool. All right. Trombone. So, trombone, your kit's going to look like this. And if you're renting an instrument from us, um, that could potentially be the exact same slide, slide grease you have in your, uh, in your kit. That's okay. You'll get some extra. Um, Basically, for you, everything is the same. You have a, you have a snake. I want to go over the snake, and I want to go over this part right here. All right. Do, do, do. And I'll try to stay in camera for you too, so I. Can. Okay, I can adjust. All right. So, like the flutes, when you're doing this, you're gonna do it where you take your instrument apart, put it in the case. All right. So for you, 
super easy because you don't have many moving Good parts. Good afternoon again. We are going to begin our dismissal. All right. We will start with our I walkers. Talk over her? Walkers, okay. you All right. are dismissed. So, Snake. Can everyone have a very happy and safe. On the bell Thanks side, you go to the very end. Pull it out. Wipe it down. You're good. Here's the important bit. Slide lock. When you do the slide, make sure it's locked. Put your finger on the lock so it doesn't move. Same thing. Go down one side until it stops. Pull it out. Do the other side. Okay? Last thing before I let you roll. When you do the slide itself, so she can kind of see this too. Can you see this green line? That's the part you need to, everything below that line is what you need to put oil on. Up here, doesn't really touch anything in the metal. So you really want to do it here. See the little rubber bit? It's going to go on the ground. You're going to pull it out. This is your applicator. See how it kind of has a curve to it? Goes on the slide. It looks like snot. It's kind of gross looking. And that's it. Run that up and down. And you're done. Make sense? Straightforward. Cool. All right. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I hope we got through everything. If you have any further questions, you can always call the shop. Did you do mine? Just, I did. Low grass. I came and showed you the kit. Remember, man? Happy Thanksgiving, oh, man. Happy Thanksgiving. I did. Happy Thanksgiving. You know I did. I saw you paying attention. Any quick questions? Do you want to meet Jeff Bezos? Thank y'all so much for your time. I really appreciate y'all doing a good job.